You're about to listen to an excerpt of Secret City Geek Lab, Orange County's best in geek news and pop culture features. Broadcasting live every Sunday at 3 p.m. on 89.5 FM in Anaheim or online at ktstfmanaheim.com. Coming out also in uh, limited release in L.A. and New York, but also on video on demand, is the movie Apartment Troubles. Apartment Troubles is a story about how Olivia and Nicole are codependent roommates who are definitely going to make it. They're just not sure how. When they get evicted from their shoebox apartment in Manhattan, conceptual art just doesn't cover the rent. They boldly take off to L.A. for the promise of sunshine. As one door slams shut, another opens. A tarot card reading later, the duo decides to take their performance art sensibilities to the mainstream by auditioning for a reality television talent show. This uh, madcap buddy film marks the screenwriting and directorial debut of co-stars and real-life friends Jennifer Prediger and Jess Weixler. Strong comedic performances are also included, including uh, Megan Mullally, Jeffrey Tambor, and Will Forte, and they reveal the vulnerability behind even their most bizarre behavior. Apartment Troubles has been uh, has a running time of 95 minutes and is not rated currently by the MPAA. The film premiered at the 2014 Los Angeles Film Festival, and it is in uh, limited release now, but it is also on video-on-demand platforms such as iTunes and Vudu. Uh, we had a chance to interview uh, the not only the stars of Apartment Troubles, but also the writers and director of Apartment Troubles. And uh, the first person we talked to, she plays the role of Olivia. This is uh, Jennifer Prediger. Okay, I'm with uh, Jennifer Prediger. Uh, you play, you are the writer, director, and you play Olivia in the movie Apartment Troubles. Yes, and I, I, I co-wrote, co-directed, co-starred in the movie with my dear friend Jess Weixler. Um, who plays the character Nicole. So okay. it was a co-creation about a code of friendship, which thankfully she and I don't have. But, um, okay. Yeah. Well, tell, tell me about your character, Olivia. Well, Megan Mullally, I think, said it best when she said she dresses like a fourth grader. Um, she's kind of a, you know, a girl, a woman child uh, who is almost uh, obsessed with her best friend and roommate, played by Jess, um, and and she sort of looks to to Nicole for for everything in life, and 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 their relationship's a little bit um, murky. They're they're a little too uh, enmeshed in each other's lives, and the boundaries are a little uh, <laughs> messed up. Right. So they're two people yeah. who are who are kind of a little too uh, I wouldn't say involved with each other, but yeah, kind of woven too closely together <laughs> emotionally. And- like, yeah, and and we wanted to explore that when like two people together, you know, actually start detracting from each person's individuality. That's that's kind of what we were doing in, in kind of a buddy comedy format. Um, we were like really inspired by. Dumb and Dumber, uh-huh. and the odd, the odd couple, and with Nail and I. So how did the idea come about? Uh, it's it's a very unique story because um, I'm not necessarily, you know, you're, you're definitely keeping a, a couple steps ahead of the audience in the story. Hmm. Well, that's nice to hear. Um, I think there were just so many little aspects of life in New York and trying to make it as an artist here that we kind of took to an extreme. Um, but really, I would say that the basis for the inspiration for the movie was actually this dilapidated bohemian apartment on 10th Street in the East Village, um, where I was living in an illegal sublet for several, well, I guess about a year. And um, I had to go away for a couple of months to make films um, in Connecticut, and Jeff was in town doing a good wife, and she needed a place to live, so she and I met each other for the first time, even though we kind of knew of each other, mm-hmm. um, but I, I just adored her right away, and and so while I was gone for two months, she held down the fort, but in that time, she the stove almost blew up on her, she got an eviction notice on the door, I mean, there was always something happening with this apartment. Like, the, the whole bathroom was held together with duct tape. Um, it, it, the, the apartment actually hadn't been updated, really, since, I mean, I'm not going to say since the late 1800s, but 
it was built in the 1880s, and there were many aspects of the apartment that were original. Mm-hmm. So there was a very, like, old-world immigrant feeling, uh, but also, like, a really kind of creative, vibrant space, too. Yeah. Only one only one sink in the apartment. You had to brush your teeth in the kitchen, and it only really ran hot water. So it was just a very funny little apartment, and, and she and I ended up living there together for a month. And yeah. within the first week, we were like, let's just do something with this. So we kind of started creating this world around this nutty apartment. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I, I lived in a kind of in a dumpy place myself. And, and it's, it's that place that endears me. You know, it's some of my most fond memories of living yeah. in places like that. Yeah, it's like the salad days or something. Like there's just something so charming about it, even though at the time it was a little bit awful. Yeah. I know. Well, here, I'm going to ask a silly question just because uh, I've, you know, I've lived here in L.A. all my life and I've seen a lot of movies and TV shows about New York apartments. And do you, can you kind of give me an idea of what are kind of the differences between New York and L.A. apartments? For me, L.A., it's it's pretty straightforward transaction. You know, you pay rent and you live in an apartment. Yeah. In New York, there's a big difference, which is that, you know, there are a lot of people crammed on this tiny island and and I think finding an apartment is one of the trickiest things people go through living in a city, apart from getting, like, preschoolers into, you know, preschool. But um, you have to, on many occasions, pay a broker. Uh-huh. And, a bro- and those brokers can charge you, you know, like 10% of a year's rent or something. So you end up paying sometimes two, dollars $3,000 just to have someone, like, Look for show it. you an apartment yeah. and then do the paperwork with you. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So, so there's that. And I think in New York, people get a little trapped in their apartments because once you have one, you don't want to leave it because you know how costly it will be yeah. to get another one. So I think a lot of people stay in bad relationships or move in together all too quickly in New York yeah. because, you know, it, it seems more convenient. But I think there are a lot of bad life decisions maybe me just right. because of the difficulty of getting an apartment in the city. So you got to find I mean, one, capture it, and then bunker in. Exactly. Right. And and if you're, if you're an artist or you know, someone who's not making a ton of money, it's all the more of a struggle. So yeah. we kind of wanted to play with that and the idea of this like, creative, this creative city that's pretty hard for artists to kind of make it in. Yeah. Okay, let me, um, I think I can get one more question in here for you. Um, yeah. So, it, about the theme of it, I, I hesitate asking about themes because I always feel like I'm going to get it wrong, but the movie starts off with a, a brief story about the trouble doll, and the feeling yeah. I got from the movie is that we as, sometimes uh, we have this tendency to put disaster off until it actually arrives. Does that seem to be uh, what your theme was? Or uh, the idea that, uh, you know, there are big obstacles we know we're going to have to face and we just want to put it off as far as possible? Mm. That's an interesting question. I I don't know if that was in our minds as we made the movie. Um, the, the, I don't know if you know that the, the movie was originally called Trouble Ball. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's just kind of like... Several things. It's just like these these girls having a difficult time of it, trying to find themselves um, and make it in the city. I, I do think there's a theme of um, how when people lose things or it feels like all is lost, mm-hmm. that those those times can actually be the most fruitful times in a way because it's like you almost have to lose everything to to get on the path that you're really meant to be on. So we were exploring, like, that kind of loss, mm-hmm. which is ultimately maybe a gain. Right. Um, you know, with Nicole losing, you know, I, I don't want to give anything away, right. but she, she she loses quite a bit, and my character loses a bit, and, 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 and how that can actually be, like, a, a new, improved beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely been in the, in that situation in my life, and, and that's kind of the the feeling I got, especially near the end of the movie. Of mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you just have to detach yourself of the things that uh, that are weighing you down, get rid of, or to have it kind of fall fall to pieces, and then kind of yeah. be reborn out of that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and to, like rise from the ashes. Yeah. And it feels terrible at the time, but in some ways it can be the greatest gift you've ever gotten. So we, we tried to explore those themes a bit in the movie. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, I'm talking with Jennifer Prediger. You play Olivia in the movie Apartment Troubles, and it's on. Uh, it's in select theaters and void video on demand. And iTunes. And iTunes. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. That was uh, Jennifer Prediger, star, uh, writer, and director of Apartment Troubles. And we had a chance to talk to her co-star. Uh, Jennifer talked a little bit about the story, and we talked to Jess Weixler about uh, how they made the film and, and the difficulties and the challenges it takes to bring an independent film to the masses. And here's that interview. I'm with Jess Weixler. You play Nicole in the movie Apartment Troubles. How are uh-huh. you doing? Very good. Um, so tell me about your character, Nicole. Nicole is a narcissist. <laughs> we... We wanted to show a codependent relationship, which is essentially one is a bit more of a narcissist and one is needs to be needed. Um, That's always a good relationship to have. A great relationship. Hence why there's a change over the course of, of the movie. They must, they must change their ways. But it was really fun playing somebody who is outlandish like a full-blown narcissist is. And we did use a lot of other buddy movies to fashion our characters and the character dynamic. Things like The Odd Couple, where we really pushed their personalities apart, but also very much this movie with Nail and I, which is a British cult film. The incre- I would in no way say that Nicole is as narcissistic and amazing as With Nail is and With Nail and I, but I did look at his character and go like, okay, that, that's how you do that. <laughs> And uh, how would you describe, uh, I guess, your dynamics? You, you mentioned you're the narcissist and uh, Olivia is the, I guess, I guess codependent is the best way to describe it. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the way they're just feeding off of each other and uh, kind of, I guess, sucking the life out of each other in a way. Yes. And, get, and giving it. <laughs> there must be some good side or else they wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. The addiction. Well, um, oh, go ahead. I, I think that. You know, in in the good sense, they are supporting each other's dream, even though their their dream is like abstract art. They they at least believe in each other. I mean, that's one of the sweet aspects of their relationship. They want each other to succeed. They don't want each other to sort of give up on what they're doing, even though that in turn makes makes them do inappropriate things at inappropriate times. They're like, just do it. What's right for you, even though. Doing Anton Chekhov's Seagull on a reality TV talent show is completely inappropriate. But, you know, their heart is in the right place. Yeah, and they definitely work together to pull that one off. Right? They do that today. Yeah. Okay. Right, it was an amazing scene, for, for one thing. Well, let, let's talk about the making of the film. You know, I, I feel like today, uh, f- especially for independent filmmakers, it appears to be a lot easier to put your dreams to film, so to speak. Do you think you could have done this 10 years ago, or do you think this is the right time for the independent filmmaker? I loved independent film a decade ago, or, or even, like, indie, indie film in the 90s was... Um, amazing, like sex lives and videotape and stuff like that, but those were bigger budgets. And it's amazing what you can do with very little money now. And we shot this movie in 14 days, and that's because the equipment is so good, and people are just game mm-hmm. to hustle and make stuff happen however they can, especially first-time filmmakers. So I think it is a great, a great time for indie film. There's a lot of it coming out, and there's a lot to sort of sift through and find out for people to figure out what they'll like, what they'll want to watch. Mm -hmm. But what you can do with these cameras now and how quickly you can move is amazing. You filmed this in both L.A. and New York, which uh, is, Uh is a... Is a task in itself, especially from a budget standpoint. We were blessed that our producers were like, yeah, you, you know, this is, it's got a road trip element to it. And we were also blessed that one of our producers knew someone with a private plane. Because yeah. that, not that we flew on a private plane, but we at least shot a scene in a private plane, yeah. which, which did so much of the storytelling for us because we really wanted to show that they came from different backgrounds and even though Nicole has been ostracized from her family emotionally and they aren't giving her money anymore she did come from wealth right and 
that sort of is a big part of who she is, it adds to her entitlement. And she can just walk onto a private plane yeah. because she knows the pilots and they will fly her somewhere. Yeah. I'm so Which, that's poor. a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm so dirt poor, but yet I can still get on a jet plane. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I hope we can all just walk onto a private <laughs> plane and they take us wherever we want to go. Yeah. Um, but it was, re- it was really nice to be able to show those worlds, the sort of dinginess and like hardcore scrappy living that was New York and then they walk into like the lap of luxury that is Nicole's family in LA Mm -hmm. that you know that quasi mansion we got to shoot in yeah it was just nice to to show those two worlds and and then and then also you know the the other side to it is the distribution you know you you're in a few theaters um, but uh, predominantly you're going to be on video on demand on iTunes is is that easier nowadays getting distribution in that way or is there still challenges to getting your movie to an audience I think the biggest challenge is marketing because these platforms are amazing for access for getting out there but but the question is still how do you convince people to watch your movie <laughs> <laughs> You're like, watch this one. And it's just getting it out there enough, hoping enough people see the trailer, hoping enough people hear about it on shows like this. Mm -hmm. I think in the indie world, you do still have to kind of hustle to tell people what's out there. Because there is a lot to choose from. Yeah. I mean, I definitely get access to a lot of... Uh, the ability to see a lot of independent films and you, you in the sea of movies out there, especially against the big studios, you know, your heart sinks a lot when you realize it's going to be a hard, it's going to be hard for a movie like this to find an audience at all. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the thing that kind of happened by chance is that we, we got Will Forte and Jeffrey Tambor and Megan Mullally two years ago, you know, and they're friends of ours and they agreed to do this movie, which was a beautiful thing because they're such comedic geniuses. Mm -hmm. But then Will and Jeffrey Tambor have blown up in the past year. And this was shot before those shows were shot that that they blew up on. So it, it kind of is just lovely that we have people who, I mean, they were going to be genius geniuses anyway, but more people know who they are now. Yeah. Which will hopefully, hopefully that'll make even more people go like, oh, I like this cast. I I know. Yeah, I mean Jeffrey's been around a long time, but now he's right. you know he's he's got his own show now. Um, he's a gold globe winner now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, and Will Forte. I mean, just the strides he's been able to make past Saturday Night Live. I mean, a question I have is, you know, about that supporting cast, were they in mind when you wrote the movie? Uh, Megan, especially, uh, she seemed to have really created a character out of that. And um, was that in mind, and were you giving her a lot of ideas about her character? You know, it, it was a relationship, but because we were dealing with great people, if they had ideas, I mean, we wanted them to run with it. Mm-hmm. And we did write the characters with actually each of them in mind, because we sort of knew that we knew them, and there was a chance we could get them, so we we wrote the script thinking of them, and then pitched it to them, like, we wrote this part for you, we really hope you do it. And then they luckily were each available for a day or two to, be, to come in and do it. But we did let people, like... Will and Megan and Jeffrey have moments where they where they could just go on an improv tangent. Yeah, they're so good at it. Supporting cast is amazing. All that stuff about Will's mom, straight straight out of the mind of Forte. <laughs> okay, well I won't spoil that one. Um, <laughs> Let me ask you also, oh, uh, so your character is the artist in the movie. In the apartment, we see a lot of your character's artwork. Is is that, I, I wasn't sure, because when I saw the credits, it looked like that those are that's existing artwork, or was that created for the movie? One or two of them was existing artwork, and, an, and another created for the movie in the apartment. But because we had this amazing woman, um, Amber, oh, okay, what's her last name? can't believe I'm blanking. She came in and, I'm going to like this if I'm talking, uh, and did a lot of it with our set designer, Katie Hickman, uh-huh. um, who worked so fast, I couldn't believe it. I mean, they, they made stuff overnight, um, but the, there's one thing called the masses, which is all the gloves yeah. filled with sand going up the ladder. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
And that that existed before. That had been an art installation somewhere. That Amber Kelly. Oh my gosh, such an easy last name too, Amber Kelly. And so together they brought in pieces she'd already done and and made some. But what I love is this, that the name she had did remind me of the kind of name that Nicole would use. And, and we took a lot of them out of the movie, but we, we had names like this one's called Latex Misunderstanding. <laughs> Does it, like, just, you know, high concept. Like, what could, what could it mean? The masses is what that glove on it. What does that mean? <laughs> I guess I, I saw it more like household item art. Things yeah. you find around the house and just putting it out there. Garbage art. <laughs> Garbage and spray paint art. All right, well, thanks a lot. I'm talking with Jess Weixler. Uh, you play Nicole in Apartment Troubles, and it's in select theaters now, and video on demand in iTunes if you want to either rent or purchase. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the interview. Oh, my pleasure. All right, so uh, there we go. That was our segment about Apartment Troubles. Go out and see it now um, on your favorite video platform. If you happen to be in L.A. or New York, you can watch it there as well. All right, we'll be right back after these words. Don't miss your favorite movie reviews and interviews. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and be sure to like and comment about this excerpt. Enjoy.